الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأسابه أجمعين إلى يوم الدين ما بعد ذلك ومن يعظم شعائر الله فإنها من تقوى القلوب ويبا أنس دي سمبلز أف الله ويبا فنريت دي سيكرمنز أف الله دي وي ماكس أف الله That is a sign of taqwa in the heart, devotion, and thus respect leads to piety of the hearts, the outcome, the result of this honoring the symbols of Allah results in taqwa al-qulub. Zabla ibn Mubarak used to say, نَحْنُ إِلَىٰ قَلِيلٍ من الأدب أحوج منا إلى كثير من العلم We are more in need of a little etiquette just the basic etiquette than excessive knowledge So adab is such that it will draw everything else It's a means which will draw everything else Sahal bin Abdullah used to say من قهر نفسه بالأدب فهو يعبد الله بالإخلاص Whoever subjugates the nafs, vanquishes, subdues, suppresses Whoever conquers this nafs بالأدب With adab etiquettes Then he will worship Allah with sincerity He will worship Allah and be genuine so adab is very important in deen and when we are going to these Mubarak places you go into the palace of the king you'll have to know the etiquettes of dress of the king etiquettes of speech in front of the king etiquettes of the palace how you should walk and how you should address the king Kalamul Muluk Mulukul Kalam The speech of kings are the king of speeches So Allah is the king of kings And this adab and this respect If we go back in tarikh and history We'll see Anbiya alayhimu salatu wa salam Were very particular as well In just addressing Allah Rabbul Alameen Nuh alayhi salam 950 years making effort on his people he withstood all the wretchedness that was meted out innahum kanu qawman ameen they were a blind nation Nuh alayhi salam after seeing the obstinacy made dua la tadhar ala al-ardi min al-kafirin dayyara Ya Allah, wipe out all the infidels on earth. So he was commanded to prepare a boat and Nuh alayhi salatu was salam followed instructions. But his son was adamant and refused to board the ship with Nuh alayhi salam. So he was overpowered with parental love and he made dua to Allah, Rabbi inna bani min ahli. Oh my Allah, my son is from my family. So ya he, he with adab, wa inna wa'adaka al-haq. Your promise is true, genuine, wa anta ahkamu al-haakimeen. You are the supreme judge, you know what's best. Ya Allah, I want my son to be rightly guided and board the ship if you can honor me with this favor. Allah replied, this was also teaching humanity afterwards till Qiyamah, that it may be your closest family relatives if they do not have deen and they do not respect the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then outwardly they may be your family, but in reality they are not your family. Ya Nuh. إنه ليس من أهلك. Oh no, he's not from amongst your family. His deeds were undignified. Do not talk to me. 
about this matter which you have no knowledge otherwise you'll be from the ignorant and takuna min al jahilin so nu alayhi salam with fear trembling on the caution of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what did he reply rabbi inni a'udhu bika an as'alaka ma laysa li bihi ilm Allah i seek your protection from questioning such a matter the reality which i have no knowledge of if you do not forgive me and have mercy on me o allah akum min al khasirin i will be from amongst the losers alama shabir ahmed uthman in his tafsir under this verse explains that nu ali salam trembled and sought forgiveness from allah he didn't say in the future i will not do it again why because part of adab is to admit you are at flaw so we do not have any ability to achieve anything by our own and we need the help and the assistance of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to remain on the straight path so again just ya allah i made a mistake i'm wrong i used the wrong words so different anbiya ali musallatu wassalam taught us adab when speaking to allah in tarikh ur rusul wal muluk it is mentioned about musa alayhi salam when he reached madian after traveling for seven days days and nights he was extremely tired and hungry and he made dua rabbi inni lima anzalta ilayya min khairin faqir Oh Allah whatever good you descend I am in need of it whatever good you can send down I am in dire need of it so Musa alayhi salam could have said oh Allah give me food oh Allah give me drink but this was the adab and the respect and the reverence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when Musa alayhi salam was at khidr and uh, he 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 had to make a flaw in the boat for aratu an aibaha i thought i should create a defect in it likewise when he came to the house of the orphans for arada rabbuka ay yablugha ashuddahuma wa yastakhrija kanzahuma so in both places out of adab due to the respect of Allah he attributed the task which a uh, had an element of wrong doing to himself and a task which was good here he attributed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so again adab yunus alayhi salam when he was put in under test and trial and he was swallowed by the fish la ilaha الا انت سبحانك اني كنت من الظالمين so oh allah you are flawless and i am the wrong doer so again showing the respect and adab and this the, just him showing this adab and displaying this respect Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala acknowledged it and forgave him and then acknowledged falaw la annahu kana min al musabbihin la labitha fi batnihi ila yawm yub'athun had he not described uh, the purity of Allah praise Allah may the dhikr of Allah he would have remained in the stomach of the fish till the day of qiyama Isa alayhi salatu was salam on the day of qiyama when the Christians will be asked uh, why they made Isa alayhi salam his mother a shirk and why did they ascribe partners and created this uh, relationship they will will be asked anta qulta lin nasi so Allah will address Musa alayhi uh, Isa alayhi salatu was salam when 
the Christians will say that they told us to do it. Isa and his mother told us to do it. So Isa salam will then be interrogated. Did you say ittakhiduni wa ummiya ilahaini min dunillah? Did you ask the people to make you and your mother partners, ascribe partners with me? So uh, normally when you ask somebody, Anta qulda, did you say this? Lam aqulu, I didn't say it. But the answer was out of great respect and adab. And what did he say? In kuntu qultuhu faqad alimtahu. Oh my Allah. If I said it, then you know about it. تَعَلَمُ مَا فِي نَفْسِي وَلَا أَعَلَمُ مَا فِي نَفْسِكَ You know what is in my inner soul, in my thoughts. I don't know about yours. إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ عَلَّامُ الْغُيُوبِ You know the unseen. He praised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Such praises that in it praise, it gave the answer. And now, even after the falsehood of the Christians will be revealed, then Isa salam made dua. He could have said, La tu'adhibum, don't punish them. Like when somebody's been taken to task by a senior, say, please don't eat him, please don't eat him. But what, Allah, what Isa salam made dua, in tu'adhibum fa innahum ibaduk, oh Allah, if you punish them, then they are your slaves, they are your servants. Wa in taghfil lahum fa innaka anta al-azizul hakim. And if you forgive them, then Ya Allah, only you, only you are the one who is the Almighty, the wise. You know if you should forgive them or not. So again, adab and respect. Likewise, when Nabi wasalam ascended for Mi'raj and he was in close proximity, pro close proximity to Allah, then the mannerism of the words ma zagha al-basaru wa ma tagha Allah described neither his eyes went astray nor transgress so Allama Shabir Ahmed Uthmani explaining his tafsir said that uh, whatever this I saw was seen with authority and patience means with respect and adab it never moved to the left or right, it never strayed beyond the limits. It focused on where it should have focused. So in the court of the kings where you need to focus and a person is in front of somebody senior, then you will look where you should be looking. It is disrespect to look anywhere else in front of the Baytullah, in front of the Rawda, what adab, what adab, what respect should be we show in? So, who am I? What am I? Where am I? Know who you are speaking to. As a sheikh was invited to Medina Munawara by Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam, but he was so much overawed that for 90 days he never had the courage and the himmat to go in front of the Rawda Mubarak. For 90 days he fasted. Then a Abid seen a dream of Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam giving a message for Hazrat Shaykh Zakaria rahmatullah alayhi. So that Abid located Hazrat Shaykh and he said, I come with a message from Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam and his told me to ask you, when are you coming to see him? He was overawed because we know what flaws we have, how much of Sunnah have we practiced on our life. And as a Sheikh was very particular about Sunnah, very particular about Adab and etiquette. And he was a saint, yet despite all his accolades, he was shy to come in front of the Rawda and to make salam to Nabi alayhi salatu was salam and he said, I don't have the guts, I don't have the guts, I don't have the himma to present myself in front of he, my Nabi. So uh, the Abid, uh, the person who seen the dream said, but the Nabi is calling you, he is waiting to see you. So the Sheikh went and he still didn't have guts to go directly in front of the Rawda, a little bit distance away. 
he made the salat and the salam so such a great uh, luminaries such great personalities how much sifat did they have what qualities what perfections they had but they considered themselves imperfect and how imperfect and how much flaws we have and we consider ourselves eligible to go in front of these mubarak places so adab of allah that uh, everything connected to allah and his nabi bishr hafi uh, in his early days left a life of negligence and ghaflat and he was an alcoholic and uh, one day on the street he saw a piece of paper with the name of allah written on it so he stopped instantly pick it up and out of adab he cleaned the paper placed it on a raised platform so that nobody would step on it and when he reached home a a a wali a kamil a sheikh came to his house and said i've received ilham to come to you and tell you that the way you respected allah's name almighty allah will bestow great fame and respect to your name in this world and when he heard this, he was impacted, he made sincere tawbah and he became amongst the greatest awliya of that era. Just, it just started with adab and respecting the name of Allah. Na'udhu billah, people go with the cell phones, they are chatting on the phone, they allow the musical ringtones to ring in these Mubarak Muqaddas places. They chat with people, they have discussions. They face their feet in the direction. They uh, breach all the adab and the etiquettes of these Mubarak places. Salim was in front of the Baytullah once on the Mataf. And Hisham bin Abdul Malik, the, uh, the Khalifa of the time, offered him a offering. And he said, if you need anything, please let me know. So I can do it for you. So Salim said, Hisham, I feel ashamed to ask anything from anyone other than Allah while standing in front of the Baytullah. While in front of the Baytullah, I find it disrespectful to ask any being besides Allah. And the, 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 the demand of this place demands that I should spread my hands only before Allah. So Isha made no answer, he kept silent and uh, he waited outside for Salim. As Salim came outside the Haram, Isham approached him and he said, now tell me what can I do for you? So Salim said, do you want me to ask you for a dunyawi worldly need or ukhrawi read, uh, need for deen? So uh, Isham said, as for, for Deen, I, you know, I, I, I cannot assist you with regards to that. As for Dunya, ask what you desire. So uh, Salim replied, I've never asked anything of Dunya from Allah, who is the creator, who is the Khalik, who is the Malik of this world. I never create, asked Allah, Rabbul Alameen, for Dunya. How can I ask dunya from you? So Isham felt ashamed and he left. So adab and adab of these places are very important. So if we understand who we are, we can understand who Allah Rabbul Alameen is. So it all starts with myself first. Who am I? Man arafa nafsahu faqad arafa Rabbahu. If you understand yourself, you will really ask, understand whom Allah is. It is uh, attributed to Hazrat Yahya bin Mu'az al-Razi who made the statement. Recognize yourself, you will recognize Allah. Imam Nawi has mentioned Man arafa nafsahu bil du'af wal iftiqar ila Allah wal ubudiyya lahu عرف ربه بالقوة والربوبية والكمال والصفات العلا. Whoever recognizes 
that he is weak, he is dependent, and he is in need of worshipping Allah, then you will re realize that Allah is all powerful, Allah is the Rabb, Allah is perfect, I'm imperfect, Allah has got all the qualities, I've got no qualities. So Tajuddin ibn Ata used to say that um, Man arafa nafsahu, somebody recognizes that how insignificant, how helpless you are, you realize how significant and how powerful Allah is. If you recognize how dependent you are, you will realize how independent Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. Abu Talib Maki has mentioned that if you recognize your sifat, if you recognize your sifat, your qualities, and how people should treat you, then you will realize how much, so a person has so much bad qualities, but he asks people, people to treat him good and well. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has so much perfect qualities, how much more is worthy uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be treated uh, with uh, respect. So uh, understanding uh, the reality and understanding how much weakness we are and how we filled with weakness. Lama Jalaluddin Suyuti has mentioned that uh, if you realize your weaknesses, you will realize the strength of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَنْ عَرَفَ نَفْسَهُ بِالْفَنَا عَرَفَ رَبَّهُ بِالْبَقَى You know you're going to end, you're going to terminate one day. You'll, you know that Allah will perpetuate and remain forever. وَمَنْ عَرَفَ نَفْسَهُ بِالْجَفَى وَالْخَطَى عَرَفَ رَبَّهُ بِالْوَفَى وَالْعَطَى Subhanallah. And whoever recognizes that you are full of flaws, full of sin, then you will realize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is perfect, Allah is all giving, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who should be obeyed. So we should come out of this darkness, we should come out of this jihalat, and uh, understand that the place we are going to, and the adab, otherwise if a person who doesn't have adab, and have the right people, the right ulama, the right scholars, the right mashaykh to teach us these adab. And a person will do a lot, but the results will be the least, the benefit the least. And if we know adab, then even with a little, we can do a lot. It was like a supermodel was driving home in a sports car, a super car, when she got caught in a hailstorm, uh, a hailstorm, the car was covered with dents. She stopped at a garage uh, and, and the um, a mechanic that was there checked the guy said fine but you know what for all these dots and spots here you need to go to the exhaust and blow as hard as you can and the dents would pop out so she went home she went red in the face huffing and puffing and uh, she just screamed what frustration so husband came to the garage to see what's all the fuss and she showed her husband that the mechanic told me to do this here, but all these dents are not going away. So the husband rolled his eyes in utter as amazement. He could not believe her foolishness and her stupidity. So he said, ah, you need to wind up all the windows first. All the windows were down, so you need to close all the windows if you want it to work to foolishness upon foolishness, if we don't realize, if we don't spend time with Ahlullah, the ulama haq then a lot of effort will be made, but that effort may go in vain. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept the little we're doing, give us ikhlas and give us tawfiq to look after every moment. The amal for today is to make a niyyah if Allah gives anybody tawfiq to do the Hajj or Umrah in masjid aqsa so Umay Hakim bint Umayya narrates man ahalla on the authority of Umay Salma man ahalla bi hajjatin or umratin person dons a haram for hajj or umrah from Masjid Aqsa to Masjid Haram ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhambihi wa ma taakhar 
he sends all forgiven or wajabat lahul jannah or jannah in another narration becomes compulsory for him فَرَكِبَتْ أُمُّ حَكِيمٍ إِلَى بَيْتِ الْمَقْدِسِ So she took a conveyance, she mounted it, and she went to Baytul Maqdis, Masjid Aqsa, حَتَّى هَلَّتْ مِنْهُ بِعُمْرَةٍ And she started her umrah from there. وَآخِرُ دَعْوَانَا أَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ